basketball fans, and welcome to the West Gym for tonight's game between the Missouri, Cal State, Dominguez Hills, Toros, and your Simon Fraser University. Junior, hit it from Jackson. 
And we're here with you live for the start of our final game of the evening. Simon Fraser, their debut as the Red Leafs as part of this GNAC CCAA challenge set to continue tomorrow. Simon Fraser set to tip off against Cal State Dominguez Hills. The Toros out of Carson, California. David Cheatham, number one. Jordan Hillstock, number two. Andre Ball, number three. Damian Miller, number four. And number 23, Hunter Seymour, your starters for Cal State Dominguez. David Penny, number three. Eric Beckett, number 10. Jamal Wright, 15. Elliot Demakilagan, 20. And George Lefebvre, 34. And Lefebvre losing the opening tip in Cal State Dominguez. Jacob Hall have the ball to start this game. Packed house, by the way, Howie. Great crowd. <laughs> That's exciting for SFE. We're seeing, you know, really a brand new roster, like brand new, almost brand new starting lineup outside of David Penny. It's exciting. It is exciting. Victor Radichai, the Richmond product, the 6'10", 225 wing forward uh, out of Eastern Washington, not dressed for the game today, out with an injury. So Eric Beckett, number 10, nursing that sore hamstring against UBC, now into the starting lineup. Here's Elliot Demakilangan, the long-limbed off guard. Turned over, though. And very quickly, Damian Miller for the Toros. Miller, hesitation drive to the window. Ripped away by Jamal Wright quickly to Beckett. And here comes the big man coming down the floor, Eric Beckett. Goes to Jamal Wright to David Penny, the lead guard on this team. In the half court to Mackie Lang and trying to break down his defender. Gets on the baseline. Oh, dished it away. Stolen by Hillstock. And right back to Miller. Hillstock lays it up and in. I think LA could have just taken that on his, his own. I think he was surprised that there was nobody to <laughs> defend him. He was looking to dish out right away. Well, they'll shake the jitters. They're allowed one possession in front of the home crowd. They're so happy to be playing within the friendly confines of the West Gym. Here they are in the half court. David Penny. Guarded by Damian Miller. Penny into the paint. Shot clock down to seven. The no-look dish to right for three. Jamal, bingo! That's something Jamal Wright's worked on all offseason. He's kind of known as a lanky defender, but he's got a little bit of a shot as well. Makes that, him a real dangerous player. That'll be huge for Wright. Underneath the basket, tight quarters there, and I believe that was Andre Ball trying to score it. And yes, he is related to the Ball clan in the uh, NBA, the cousin of LaMelo Ball. Andre Ball, a uh, transfer from Pepperdine, and he's gonna get a touch off the inbounds, can't convert. And the Red Leafs with a chance to build on the 3-2 lead. Here's Penny. Miller taking on the task there. Lefebvre with the screen. Back to George Lefebvre, 34, thought about it, takes the three ball. Oh. It's a tough shot for George. His strength is really that low block. Lefebvre, one of the transfers from Vermont. Underneath they go, unable to score it out of bounds. Hunter Seymour losing the handle. The Charlotte, North Carolina native, the senior, 6'8", 220. So we've had a former relative of a Grizzly. We have a relative of Lamello, <laughs> Lavar, etc. Pretty interesting. Uh, yeah, <laughs> we talked about those. And the other Western player too. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Nick Welp, the son go. of the late Christian Welp, played in the last game. Oh, oh. was that an alley hoop or was that intended? Whatever <laughs> it was, David Penny just scored it, his first basket at home this season. Five-two Red Leafs. Nice little floater from David. <laughs> Cheatham, tough shot. Oh. Now this Cheatham is a special player. Six-four, one ninety. He's a sophomore out of Los Angeles University High School. Well, how do you defend that? <laughs> Fade away jumper, hand in the face, doesn't matter. Tough shot on the baseline, 5-4. Torrell's pulled it within one. Simon Fraser, the Red Leafs with a basketball. Here's Penny in the half court, working off that Lefebvre screen, puts up the three ball. Nice box out there by Seymour. And Damian Miller. Hoisted again, look out. Andre Ball with the triple. And all of a sudden, a 7-5 lead for the visitors. When I was talking to Steve Hansen about Andre Ball, he said, this guy is for real. He gets rebounds, he can shoot threes. 
he gets like 12 rebounds a game or something ridiculous for a guy of his size. Like that's absurd for a guard. So. Coming out of the West Coast Conference, playing for the Waves and yeah. Pepperdine University, who people say the most beautiful university campus in the world. But here he comes to beautiful British Columbia and starts lighting it up with a tough shot there, a big three. Continues, I think we're going to see a timeout coming pretty quick here. That's Steve Hansen watching in front of us. A lot of length in this Toros team. Here's Penny. Going to see some personnel changes in a minute here. Lefebvre to Mackie and back to George. He puts up a three from the top. Lefebvre 0 for 2 from downtown. Subbing into the game now for Simon Fraser is going to be uh, Jimmy Zaborniak, the pure freshman point guard of the Burnaby South Secondary School, as well at Niagara Falls and Ridley College, Emmanuel Oladele. For the timeout now, Jake, uh, you know what? This Dominguez Hills team was picked fourth in the preseason coaches poll in the CCAA, and they play some big-time basketball down there, so you know this is a quality, as good a team as, as the Red Leafs are going to face this season. Well, they fit the bill. I mean, they're hitting threes, uh, creative playmaking, really good defense. So we'll see what happens. Coming out of this timeout, Simon Fraser needs to find some chemistry, and I, I would wager to say maybe, uh, you know, looking beyond the big man shooting from the outside, uh, establish that inside game. I know not having the uh, the big man Radichai, Victor Radichai at 6'10", you know, that's going to affect any team when you're losing a player like that. Lefebvre, uh, one of the big guys on a team that, you know, needs a bit of height in here. They have some bigger players. We'll see how things go. We also aren't positive yet which among the Simon Fraser players are actually going to be moving towards redshirt seasons. They were all eligible to play in the... Uh, the freshmen were in that game against UBC without hurting their eligibility. But as we start the counting games, the players that will be taking redshirt seasons won't be on the floor today. We'll see how that limits Simon Fraser. Ola Deli, number five, an active body, 66205, now into the game for Simon Fraser along with Penny. Lefebvre, Wright, and Jimmy Zaborniak. Jimmy Saborniak, as you mentioned, Burnaby South, I believe. Famous. Burnaby South secondary led them to the BC Quad A championship. Just a fearless guard. And you know what? Macon, a BC kid getting rotation minutes as a pure freshman it hasn't happened a lot in this program. That is an accomplishment by itself. Here's Miller. Or rather, Ball to Cheatham, fading from the basket off the side iron. Saved by Wright. Great job to Lefebvre. Here's Penny in the open floor. Let the point guard do what he does best. Dishing, three ball, oh, in and out. Oladelli misses, but a finish underneath. Was that Jamal Wright? That was Jamal Wright. Such a long player, hey? And wow, great yeah. athleticism entering his senior season. Takes a determined path to the basket. That's Damian Miller. And Oladelli will be called for the foul. We talk about a freshman getting in there and getting those valuable minutes. And Emmanuel Oladele at 6'6", getting that opportunity here. Ooh, that one thrown out of bounds. Miller was looking for Hillstock in the far corner. But it went off a Simon Fraser player, so Toro's basketball. Eric Watson, the junior out of Long Beach, California, 6'6", 230, a big body now into the game. There he is, a touch from 15, and he makes it count. Execution for Eric Watson. He's been averaging 10 points a game in the previous two. Penny in the half court. Trying to break down the defense, tougher than it looks. Fading shot, won't go. The rebound ripped away by Andre Ball. Miller back to Ball. Shot won't go there as Simon Fraser Zaborniak now back down the floor. 
you know, it's interesting looking at David Penny talking to Steve Hansen and talking to David throughout the offseason. He really wanted to develop as a scorer. He's known as a facilitator, but I think he wants that extra element to his game. And you saw him a little more aggressive against UBC, and we're seeing him a little more aggressive today. I, I love that, you, that, that that's what you're hearing because I think that's what he's capable of doing with this team. Zaborniak stripped of the ball. Down the floor, two for two since coming off the bench is Eric Watson. 13 to seven now the score, Toros with the lead. Petty trying to break down Miller. Simon Fraser would love to get up and down in transition, but the Toros have taken that away in the early going. Here's Lefebvre, tough going on the baseline, a nice job. And big, strong, physical. Loving what I'm seeing from George yeah. so far this year. Yeah, took two threes, unsuccessful, takes it inside and finds some success. Nigel Hilton will check in the next stoppage for Simon Fraser. Ball, defying gravity underneath the basket, can't get it to go. And Howie, you remember at uh, the Buchanan Cup, uh, George coming down with that big dunk, first couple of minutes of the game really sparked the team. Yeah. And I think you're seeing here, SFU needs a spark. They're, they're down a little bit. That first half against UBC, they started off great and then they kind of pittered off. Maybe it's the inverse. Maybe they start a little bit slower and they finish stronger. Yeah, we'll see how this progresses, but you're right about that. Ratichai not playing, as we mentioned, on a couple of occasions here, but the young players, we're talking freshmen, getting a big opportunity in the first few minutes of this half. Here's Penny, quickly. Odalele, the three, wildly caroms off the window. Hilton chases down the rebound, bodies up his defender, had the mismatch. There's a mismatch underneath there. Between Lefebvre? <laughs> With Hilton and uh, Miller. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, yes. The 5'10 Miller guarding in the post. Penny. Zaborniak for three, and Jimmy Z with a Jimmy there from downtown pulls his team to within one. That turnover doesn't feel so bad for Jimmy after that three. I mean, well, he's done, he took the ball and drew a charge early too, yeah. and then he hits the three. I mean, this is a this is a pure freshman. He's he's got ice in his veins. You can see. I was gonna say short memory, but yeah. wow, like yeah, some stones there by Jimmy. Yeah, he certainly does. He's got the 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 baby face look, but really is an assassin out there on the floor. Tough shot, not gonna go there for Jeremy Dent Smith. Here's Jimmy. Saborniak working off the Odalelli screen. This time into the paint, right to the window, and he's going to, oh, it just rolls off the iron. He's going to be fun to watch here for the next couple of years. Can't wait. <laughs> It'll be fun. Jimmy. Yeah, certainly Jimmy Saborniak, impressive early. Dent Smith puts it up, ripped away by Hilton. Zaborniak comes to a stop in the paint, pivot out to Hilton, back to Penny. One point game, a nice surge here by the Red Leafs to pull within one. Ooh, the enter on the wing, and I think the foul is gonna get called against Watson. As if you're really clawing back here after- They have, a yeah. A tough start, but led by someone like a Jimmy Zaborniak and also uh, Big George. But look at the freshmen. I mean, there's three freshmen coming off the floor right now. <laughs> it's going to be a pretty small senior class as well, which is interesting. Like, yeah. They're not a, they're a radically different team like we were talking about. You, you have guys like Jazdeep Singh, uh, Will Balada, like uh, definitely missing other people. But, like, you know, you have this real veteran-heavy team and really good players. Julian Roche. Julian obviously. Roche as well. And yeah. Tendrea who knocked down so many big threes on the coaching staff now. Coaching. now. Yeah. But that's a lot of guys <laughs> that you have to replace. And it's exciting to see this you know, young crop of guys. And like you said, a BC player as well. Yeah. Um, you know, SFU in the last few years really recruited heavily out of Ontario. And they've gotten some great guys out of Ontario. But now with someone like Jimmy from Burnaby South, like it's exciting to see him play you know, in the second rotation, no less. Like, yeah. basically, right off the get, he's already playing, so. And getting right to the rim yeah. against a team like this, you know, your first home game, I mean, we talked about the, the level of, uh, of grit he has and the level of fearlessness he brings, and I, I, I don't think it's gonna be too, I don't know what your opinion is, but the fans are gonna love watching this kid, oh, yeah. right? Absolutely, I think, you know, we're gonna see, especially, uh, 
Elude as well. Great vertical as well, especially for a young guy. So overall, they have so many exciting players that are haven't even turned 20 yet. You know, you have this really young group of guys. It's if I'm getting a pronunciation wrong, you got to slap me on the wrist. I'll and, do my and best. Let me. <laughs> are, we, are we going with Oladele? Oladele. Oladele. Okay, Oladele. number five. Yes. Don't want to get that one wrong. Here's Jimmy Z. Oladele. Freshman to freshman. The big freshman, oh. and he lays it off the window. Left hand, too. Woo. Oladele with a big basket there. Gives Simon Fraser their first lead of the game. 14-13. Here's Miller guarded by Zaborniak. And look at there, getting hands in there and battling Joven Rye. Joven Rye, who impressed so many. His level of play uh, really raised from last season. Evident by the fact that he's in a one point game nine minutes in for head coach Steve Hansen. Beckett cross court, goes to Rye, gets it back on the wing, trying to keep his balance here. Hilton for three, doesn't go. Chase down, and here comes Cheatham in full flight down the floor. What a play by Beckett, but a great follow by Ball. He'll slam it down. Wow. Wow. He's right. Yeah, wow. <laughs> <laughs> I just saw a flash go across my face, Howie. I didn't even see a number. I'm just oh like, my who gosh. is that guy? Impressive by Ball. Skip pass underneath for Hilton. From Zaborniak. Excited to see a little bit more of Eric Beckett. I thought he played really well for SFU. Probably one of their best players, if not their best player in that UBC game. Yeah, and they got to get him fully healthy for the start of the GNAC season, Jay, because that body is a physical weapon on the basketball floor. Shot clock down to six. Beckett, the dish back up. Odalele, high arcing three off the back iron. Great effort by Hilton. Beckett for three. That's Everything. the look you want, but just it, not the result. Hey, they ran it. You're right about that. Everything but going in. But Odalele show, showing you something there as a freshman. Here's Cheatham. Back to Damian Miller, tries to turn a corner, dish, oh, the Lele, the wingspan, jumps in front and intercepts the pass. What a great job. Number five using the wingspan. Oh, man, I was impressed with him in the UBC game as well. Made a lot of good cuts to the basket, but defensively, really yeah. strong as well. Yeah, I love how they're playing free out there right now, but yet within the concept of what they want to do as a team. And Allowing their physical gifts to really come to the fore here. Oladele with a great stint on the floor. Jamal right now in to spell him. Elliot Tamaki Langan also back into the game. Long arms, hey, for Elliot Tamaki Langan. <laughs> he does. His height's deceptive. He's, he's a 6'4 guard. I mean, he's got, and his wingspan is longer than a 6'4 guard. Rye stripped, and then he's going to foul. Isaiah Morris, the junior out of Oceanside, California. Zach Stone entering the game. Exciting. Zach took a redshirt year last year. So yeah. here he is. You know, I think he played maybe 10 or so minutes against UBC. So they're looking to get him a lot of minutes this year. Yeah, and you really pull for this guy, right? I mean, he brings the height. There's a three ball hoisted. Jordan Hillstock's gonna knock it down. The junior with a big shot there, 18-14. Simon Fraser needs to survive this wave and find one of their own. Here's Tamaki Langan now to Stone. The entry underneath and the reverse by Wright. That was a Zach well drawn Stone. Up play. Well drawn up play. Good feed from Zach Stone. Stone anchoring the back end of that defense with the wingspan, ball thrown away. I think that was a block. Oh, was that a block? That was, was a that? block from Elliott. Tamaki Langan. Wow. Number 20. <laughs> Heck of a block, though. 18 16. What a marvelous game here we're watching in the first half. Ooh, Simon Fraser came with that uh, double team quickly, but they're going to foul. Mm -hmm. 
Jamal Wright's foul? Is that no? Who, who was it? Was there a foul? I think they did call a foul. Yeah. It's not showing on the board right now. We're not sure who got the foul, but assessed to the Red Leafs. Crossover move, dish underneath. Great job there. Tough quarters though. Simon Fraser crowded the paint. It made it tough there for Hunter Seymour. Red Leafs can take a lead or tie here with a basket. 8.15 left in a fast moving first half of play here from the West Gym. To Langen. Goes back, Hilton for three. Oh, didn't draw iron on that shot. Nigel Hilton, 6'8", 205. Unable to connect there. Eight minutes left and this first half has really flown by. And if the offense hasn't had a chance to get on track for either team, I mean, I think you could also flip that coin, Jake, and say, the minutes that the freshman players have played, they've been pretty responsible defensively. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. And, you know, we talked about Jimmy, but just seeing some of the new guys uh, come in and play well, and, you know, not to be disparaging for SFU, it looked like they didn't really play their best opening 12 minutes, but they're in it. They're, they're down by two, so that's encouraging to me. Like, you guys aren't even hitting on full cylinders, yeah. and you're playing against a really good team with – ton of athletes as we're seeing like it is a dunk show right now so <laughs> that follow from uh, andre ball as you said a lightning bolt flashed before us and all of a sudden the follow uh, impressive there by uh the cousin of the ball brothers yeah it's so going to be exciting to see uh i want to see a little bit more like i said eric beckett i think uh david penny's checking in with uh george lefebvre or it looked like they were before the timeout, so. Simon Fraser would certainly love to get out and run and get there some easy bass. I, mean, I don't think they got a single easy transition deuce in that first 12 minutes of play. You're right, it felt like everything was underneath the hoop. So a lot of uh, extra effort plays and then the three ball by uh, Zaborniak. And credit uh, the Toros for doing their scouting and slowing down SFU in transition. Isaiah Morris to number 20, Cam Berry. And a travel, is a travel called or? No, it's a foul. It's gonna be on Zach Stone. Zach Stone of the Red Leafs with the foul, his first of the game. It's gonna send uh, Andre Ball to the free throw line. 11 points and six rebounds in the Toros loss to Division I UC Riverside. He was a key player in that game held their own against UC Riverside. Ball uh, checking in at 6'8", 200 pounds. No mistake there, 20 to 16 the lead. Right, now back up to Lefebvre. Penny to Mackie Langan. Not a whole lot of operating space to do anything. Mackie Langan's gonna throw that one over the half court stripe in the over and back call and a turnover from the determined defensive play of the Toros. Yeah, that just slipped out of his hands. He feels, you know, that's a, that's a tough one. You just gotta get it out of your memory. Come right back down and Mackie Langan though, taken out of the game. Jimmy Zaborniak now checking in. That's Penny guarding Morris. Ball, three ball hoisted there. It's gonna rattle home for Cameron Berry. He had 12 points against UC Riverside. So a guy who can fill it up. This is the biggest lead of the game at seven points now for the Toros, 23 to 16. Simon Fraser wanting to get the offense on track, but Toro's not letting that happen. Cross court, they go to right. Jamal to Penny for three. Off the mark, Stone trying to grab a rebound, can't do it. Do you get the sense that SFU is just not able to settle into an offense, right? Like every look there, yeah, no, I can't, I can't put it here, I can't put it there. Uh, I can't drive, I'll have to shoot a three. And it's just not an offense that you're gonna 
need to win. You need a little bit more free flowing, and this, I know. this defense is stifling. Yeah, it is stifling. Everything's contested. And Emmanuel Ladele will check into the next stoppage for Simon Fraser. Spin move, ball hanging in the air, can't get it to go. Jimmy Z wants to push the push the tempo here. Drive, dish back out to Stone for three. Bingo! Biggest guy on your team can also shoot. It's, good <laughs> it's never a bad thing, eh? Nice, nice weapon to have Zach Stone trailing on that play. Underneath the basket they go. Find an easy look and get two points back there from Damari and Lowe. Zaborniak though, off his dribble drive, penetration, the kick out to Stone for three, a bright moment there. Zaborniak again, this time wants to work off the Lefebvre screen. Back to Penny, he goes to Stone, Zach puts it on the deck, drives, is repelled, right goes in there. Simon Fraser maintaining possession. Great job by Wright. Yeah, Wright is all effort all the time. And put a lot of time into his body in the offseason. And our strength coaches, uh, Chris Robinson, or Robertson and uh, Tanner Kerr mentioned to me that you can tell like he you're, was. You're right about that, right? I mean, he's going up for a rebound and he's getting, he's not just vertical, he's almost no. going horizontal. He's giving it up. And that was huge to keep possession. Not to make a pun, but you're right about Jamal Wright. But yeah, <laughs> he, he's been he's been a revelation, I think, this yeah. offseason for them. And he was great last year, but you know he's taking a, another step this year, and I think he might be in line for maybe some all-conference awards. And uh, Coach Hansen said that to me, exactly that, that you know we need this guy to be an all-conference kind of a player. And right. I, I, clearly you can see that being a huge need, the veteran presence able to give the front court some size. They lost, uh, as you mentioned, Jazz Singh and Julian Roche. Julian Roche, the seven-footer, now playing pro in Switzerland. Shout out to all those uh, former SFU players from last season. Uh, really lifted the heights of this program to their, their biggest winning stretch as a Division II program. Absolutely. Here's Oladele trying to clear some room. He puts up the jumper and he hits it. <laughs> Oladele with a huge shot. Okay. Probably not how you draw it up, but hey, points are points. Manufactured, and the freshman not afraid to get dirty there to clear some space for the shot. Rice going to get called for the foul. He dug in deep against Hillstock. I think you put a little too much muscle on then in the offseason. <laughs> a, a, a little too physical. There. He doesn't know his own strength. <laughs> you can see the Western Washington staff above us here watching, scouting. Joven Race at the check-in as well here at the next stoppage. Lefebvre with the rebound on the miss from the free throw line. Simon Fraser with a chance to pull within one or tie with a made basket. Ooh. And that is... Isaiah Morris wow. is a never say die kind of defender, and you saw that there. Those shades of uh, Robert Ory, Steve <laughs> Nash. <laughs> You're right. As he slides into the minor official's table here, oh, wow. <laughs> dislodging the table with a big thump. Oh, my goodness. Right in front of the um, Cal State Dominguez Hills area by their bench and by our PA announcer. Stephen James at the other end. That was a colossal effort. And for that, Morris will step up to the free throw line. Ooh, they're missing some free throws, but they're chasing stuff oh, down. Isaiah Morris is all hustle all the time, and a three ball hoisted there is not going to fall for Cam Berry. SFU's really got to box out a bit better. I think they're a little bit lethargic on the, the defensive blast. they got to get 
set, get their uh, bodies in the right spot. Yeah, and you know what? This this uh, Toros team brings physicality, and you're right about that, Jacob. If you don't answer it, you're gonna you're gonna find yourself staring up at the scoreboard, trailing by multiple possessions. Mm -hmm. Right now, they're just down by three points. Back at Lefebvre, Joven Rye, along with Oladele, number five, and Jim Zaborniak now with the ball. I can't call him Jim. I just said Jim <laughs> Zaborniak. That, that sounded about Sounds as like wrong. his dad. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting listening to uh, our assistant coach, Adil, saying, you know, you have other options. You don't have to take that shot all the time, right? <laughs> like go through your progressions a bit but he's been great and he's been so fun to watch so far uh, coach Adil is uh, fun to deal with as well so passionate there here we go Simon Fraser still with a chance that scoreboard locked at 25-22 Oladeli will inbound to Zaborniak Joven Rye needs to oh Joven Rye nice job there Took it right at Morris. So Simon Fraser inbounding in the front court. Oladele will look for Zaborniak. Jimmy oh. hit one of those against UBC. Couldn't get that one to fall. On the baseline, Oladele surrenders but doesn't give up, but he's going to foul. Ooh, that's the... That's the young player with all the energy in the world and trying to get that ball back, can't do it. 4-16 to the half, 25 to 22 our score. Cal State Dominguez Hills, the Toros, as we mentioned to you, uh, played UC Riverside, the Division I team out of the Big West. They lost 94 to 79 and that game taking place on the 28th of October is Boy, Dent Smith misses, and they have given up a lot of points at the free throw, and they also beat Occidental 76 to 50. So they're one and one coming into this game, and this one though, the first one that actually counts. Here's Lefebvre taking it hard at the D, can't get it to go, rolls off the back iron. But the foul is gonna get called against Eric Watson. And Simon Fraser in a very important part of this game right now, that scoreboard has been locked. Jake at 25-22, uh, but Simon Fraser is taking it at the Toros right now, and they're going to be rewarded here. You can just see it coming if they can just maintain this composure. Toros and have missed three or four straight from the free throw line. Is it the crowd, maybe? A little bit of crowd action? <laughs> getting <laughs> Some home cooking? I don't know. But like, <laughs> Something's happening with the karma here. They're on the verge, I think, of uh, making some things happen. They'd love to pick up some momentum before the half. George Lefebvre out of Montreal, Quebec, the Cape Fear Academy and the University of Vermont and misses in that second free throw. <coughs> Zaborniak guarding Miller, but Miller is a quick one. He pivots. Underneath they go, and a reverse is going to go right there for number 2300 Seymour. So a four point lead with 345 remaining in the half. Zaborniak signals, drives back up top to Lefebvre for three. George O for three from that spot in the half. Three ball hoisted there, bingo. Jeremy Dent Smith coming off that 18 points against Occidental, dials up a three ball there. Yeah, that's a tough uh, three point swing there for SFU, yeah. and I think for George, you know, get in the paint, you're so strong, you're such a good finisher. And we saw an example of that on his one basket here in this half, that one. Fingertips. Hunter Seymour, a Charlotte, North Carolina native, the senior. So a theme emerged here, obviously, as we get towards the end of this half, Jake, and that's a little bit of frustration here from the Simon Fraser team. Want to get that offense going. I mean, defensively, they've been pretty good. Yeah, they've been they've been okay. They've hung in there. I think for SFU though, it's just their offense just hasn't been able to set up. So 
you know, they're taking these long threes that, you know, with maybe two seconds or a second left on the 20 or the shot clock. So not ideal for SFU. And I think they need to have certainly a little more rhythm to their game, a little bit more, you know, it just seems like they're very, very tense and they're just not able to get the looks that they want. And you know what? It, what does it tell you right now that Jimmy Zaborniak is getting as many minutes as he has? I mean, they have a, the, the, the most veteran part of this team is the Demacky Lagman Penny backcourt combo, right? You want to get them going too. Zaborniak has played wonderfully. I'm not going to even say for a freshman. He's just he's played solidly, and Absolutely. that drive and dish for the basket they got was maybe the most exciting offensive moment in this half. But your veterans need to be in there contributing as well. Absolutely, and I mean for us, if you veterans is a relative term. A relative term. <laughs> because, yes, you're right. like who, they, they, you know, Jamal Wright. They're still young. And yes. David Penny are probably their their most seasoned yeah. guys, but. You know, we've seen, uh, again, Beckett, with that. Like, these guys played, you know, in the tournament last year, the D1 March Madness tournament. Like, they played in big settings. So, you know, they, they got to be able to gain some composure. Zaborniak cross court. He goes to Hilton. Shot clock down to three for Joven Rye. He puts up the triple. He knocks it down. Joven oh. Rye dials it up. Fading to his right. It looked like <laughs> great composure from Joven Rye. Yeah, he picked up on the crowd. They get an assist on the on the clock countdown there. Big three again from Dent Smith. Can't get it to go. Big hops there from Seymour to get it back. He'll dish up top. Dent Smith drives and dishes back. Ooh, and they're going to say it went off of Zaborniak's fingertips. It's going to stay with the Toros. 12 on the shot clock. 2.21 remaining in the half. Here's Cam Barry, deep three. Seven point lead, ties the largest of the half for the Toros. And that just continues the three point dominance for Cal State, 66% right now. That can be very frustrating for Simon Fraser, working hard to battle in the paint and then giving up the big three at the other end, but Hilton working hard there. Nigel getting rewarded with some trips here. Another promising young player, Nigel Holton. Lots of excitement around him. 6'8 forward, yeah, out of Toronto. Thornley secondary. Local viewers just joining us wondering where Victor Radichai might be. He's not dressed tonight. I believe uh, he kept out with some type of minor ailment. Two minutes to the break here. What a large step to the basket that was by David Cheatham. Cheatham is going to be a problem for us if you. Yeah. I think he's matching up really well um, with the Red Leafs and has that inside out game and also his shoe game as well. She's got shoe have game. We, have we looked at his shoes? He's got <laughs> one is pink, one is green. I, I, I admire it, but. <laughs> The He's a heck of a scorer. The moxie of that moxie. move, yes. But you're right, and can score in many ways. And turned a corner like nobody's business there. Misses the free throw, though. That's been the undoing here. They could be leading by 10-plus with some made free throws. Cheat him again. 40% from the line right now. Oh, oh my, my goodness. goodness. <laughs> Steve Becker not too sure what's going on with his Toros from the stripe tonight. Here's Zaborniak. Jimmy working off the stone screen. Now he goes to Beckett, the big man underneath. Can he get it to go in Beckett? Something to build on there, number 10, using the physicality and size underneath. Yeah, that's what I really like about Beckett's game is he has kind of that lost art of the mid-range. You know, you don't uh, see it I as much it. now. You see a lot of either you have guys who are, you know, Steph Curry, three-point range, or they're in close. But he's a guy who kind of excels in that mid-range, and he's got that big body, can push off and get some space. And, you know, we saw that a lot in that first game against uh, UBC, and we're seeing it today. I was up at uh, head coach Steve Hansen's office uh, maybe three or four days before the Buchanan Cup game to do a story or two for Varsity Letters. And there was one player in his office talking to him, and Steve wanted me to come at a certain time. He sees me, he waves through the door, and 
and the, and the young man got up, and I'm telling you, there was like that much space <laughs> as he got, went through the door, and Steve's laughing. He goes, if he, if he was in football, he'd be like a rush end or a linebacker, oh, yeah. right? He goes, he can hardly fit through the door. He's saying it with great pride, yeah. and then it was Beckett who was in to see his coach. He's it's a wide bo- yeah, Yes, yeah. yes. As a coach, you want that on your team. Like, that's a unique thing that you can have that the other team does not have. It's funny, too, because he's a, you know, big guy, and he sort of looks intimidating, but whenever I've spoken to him, it's the, you know, nice, soft, calm voice, super friendly guy. As you mentioned, he and Lefebvre, the two transfers from the University of Vermont. Down to 123 remaining. Seymour over to Barry. Now to Miller. Damien will kick out for three. This time's not going to go for Barry. Miller gets the rebound though. Back. Barry tees it up again with Beck with Beckett in his face. Oh. You know, for SFU, they really got to box out a little bit here. They're not putting any bodies on bodies. Yeah, the second chance opportunities and all that kind of stuff leading to fouls a little bit unorganized, it seems, or just unable to keep it clean off the glass. And stepping up now, Jordan Hillstock, the junior. (laughs) Big smiles on his face. They made a free throw with 101 remaining here in the half. 37% 37% now. Wow. Crazy. <laughs> Crazy. For both teams. Both teams a little bit shaky from the free throw line. West Jim rocking tonight as they go one of two. And that's an improvement for them in the final minute of play here in this opening half. For the GNAC CCAA Challenge. Zaborniak kick back out to Stone. Zach to Demacke Langan. to Beckett, shot clock down to 10. Beckett squares up, can't get it to go. To Mackie Langdon, can't get the rebound into the hands of Cheatham. Quickly to Miller. Damian Miller, sealed off by Beckett, but fouled at the three is Jordan Hillstock. He's gonna shoot a trio from 15. And the foul on Elliott to Mackie Langdon, his first. Oh man, that's just, a little overzealous, just a touch. <laughs> like it's such a delicate balance. Like he's putting his hand right where it needs to be. But for everything that has gone wrong, though, they're only trailing by four exactly. points. Exactly, it's stunning. And a make there by Jordan Hillstock from Vista, California. As we mentioned yesterday, uh, or the last game, Simon Fraser will play tomorrow against Humboldt at 7.30. Our first game at 5.15 tomorrow will be Western Washington against Cal State Dominguez Hills. Lots of great basketball oh. up on the hill. It's so happy to have it back there. It is tremendous. We've got a full house here tonight. And if you're a basketball fan, want to see great live NCAA basketball, head on down tomorrow for a doubleheader here at the West Gym. To Mackie Langan. Simon Fraser trailing by nine. The Red Leafs would love to get a basket here before the half. Shot clock's turned off down to 14 seconds. Down to eight seconds to Mackie Langan. He'll pull up for a high arcing three. Doesn't draw iron oh. there. And oh my gosh, that is a microcosm of everything that's gone wrong. Just not necessary, and that's points, potentially, because it's in the bonus. In bonus, and they're going to shoot here. Oh, man. My goodness. Demacke Langan. So here's Isaiah Morris. Morris and Hillstock, uh, teammates at Vista High School, and now Dominguez Hills Toros with a late surge, now leading by 11 points at the half, 39 to 28 over the Simon Fraser Red Leafs in their Red Leafs debut here from the West Gym. We'll take a break. We'll be back with, uh, geez, I guess in about 15 minutes, Jake. We'll be back and we'll give you some numbers and 
sets you up for the second half. From Simon Fraser, back with more in a moment. Up north, the elements shape us. And like those elements, we are powerful, strong, resilient. Our red leaf is the ultimate symbol of our unity. Behind this icon have stood generations of athletes and coaches from all over BC, across the country, and around the world, who have chosen our university to pursue their passion. Champions, Olympians, legends have made Burnaby Mountain their home. This is it for the Great Cup victory. The Cyclist kick is up. It's good. I had a dream that came into my head that one day I'd try and run across Canada. I gotta set my goal at five. Because I believe in miracles and I have to. It doesn't get much better than perfect. SFU are your national champion. Canada's first Olympic gold in women's wrestling. Grounded in our strong, rich athletic history and united by the symbol of the SFU leaf, our athletes wear the SFU colors together with pride. Every time we wear our leaf, we are inspired by that timeless sense of unity and harness that shared teamwork and determination to charge into the new season with a renewed sense of passion, inspiration, and commitment. We are the SFU Red Leafs. Welcome to our new era. Dear college sports. There's light at the end of the tunnel. A return to normal and all we love about sports. You've instilled resilience, focus, and selflessness in us. We've put those lessons to work. We've found strength and unity in each other. You continue to take us places we never imagined. You bring out the best in us. So when we look forward, we see the light at the end of the tunnel. We see a better world for all of us. And, and for the college sports. sports. to build bridges. I'm here to promote inclusion. To embrace diversity. To learn from others. I'm here to support my community. I'm here to lift people up. To engage. To listen. I am here to grow. Finished by home. The 
NCAA and its member schools offer nearly half a million college athletes a path to go pro in something other than sports. Learn more at NCAA.org. I'm here to make a difference. I'm here to create. To innovate. To do research that matters. I am here to continue asking questions. To continue learning. To expand my horizons. I am here to grow. If I lose, I'll respond with respect. If I win, I'll back it up with humility. If I fail, I'll rise up with honor. It's tough for us to put it all on the line. Don't undo my hard work with poor sportsmanship. Respect, it's the name of the game. I'm here to get more than a degree. I'm here to explore. To connect. To learn. I am here to forge a new path. To push myself. To set goals and achieve them. I am here to win. I am here to grow.
And back with you all here at the West Gym atop Burnaby Mountain, Howard Samara, soon to be joined by our analyst Jacob Hall. Day one of the Simon Fraser Red Leafs men's basketball season means the start of the GNAC CCAA Challenge. Simon Fraser in a bit of a challenge themselves, Jake, as we get set for this second half of play. 39 to 27, they trail. And you look at that box score, uh, boy, I'll tell you, Jamal Wright of SFU was three of three, and Emmanuel Oladele had, had a couple of baskets. Nobody else had more than one hoop in that entire first half for Simon Fraser. Yeah, and, and as we mentioned, just not able to get into that rhythm they want to get into. And, you know, I think last, uh, last or I guess two weeks ago now, they had that really strong start and then slow finish and then strong start again in the second half and slow finish. They just, it feels like they just can't really pace themselves the way that they need to. And that's part of it being the second game of real competition that they've had, right? So for them, they're still, you know, obviously a very young team, uh, but it's a young season as well. So this is the way to knock the rust off. You're playing against a really good, really athletic, great sharpshooting team that plays physical. So you got to rebound better. You have to set up your offense better. You can't turn the ball over. Like the fundamentals of basketball, that's what they have to focus on if they want to continue and, and have a good second half. David Penny, their their leader, their point guard, who one of the best in the GNAC, he uh, picked up those two fouls and played just over 11 minutes. Uh, he's an important part of getting them into their offense and really instilling the rhythm in that offense. Yeah, he is. And, you know, again, he's one of the guys who is always on the court, always in the weight room. He is always at SFU. He works in the equipment room, by the way, so he might as well live here. Like, the guy, the guy is just the heart and soul of the team, and I think he's one of the main real uh, vocal leaders on the team. So, you know, it's going to come down to him as well, being, uh, being the point guard and also being the leader. Jimmy Zaborniak uh, among the leaders in minutes in the opening half of play, 13 and a half minutes. George Lefebvre at 1342 led the way, but Jimmy Z, the rookie, um, you can tell there's no hesitation from this coaching staff to put that freshman in such a key spot on the floor for major minutes. Yeah, and it's funny just looking at him, such a fresh <laughs> face, like he looks like. If you told me he was in grade 10, I'd be like, probably, like he could be. But he's just showing that he belongs yeah. and, and you know potentially could really excel at this level. Like, yeah, I really strong play from Jimmy. Yeah, he's a, he's a he's a player to build around in the in the seasons to come at Simon Fraser, no question about that. On the other side of the ledger, Hunter Seymour, long-limbed and uh, very active player or leading the way with or rather no, it's uh it, in fact the leading scorer Jordan Hillstock, the guard with 9 points. No double-digit scorers in this game yet. Uh, 6 points as well for Cameron Barry. Um and five points for Jeremy Dent Smith. Nothing really to speak, really spread out scoring for that Toros team in the opening half. They, and it just strikes me at how aggressive they are on the offensive end, just getting their own rebounds. And that's where SFU's really struggling. They've got to box out and they got to get their uh, some defensive rebounds. Uh, and ball pressure so key. Uh, they talk about, as we were talking at the half, the, the, the level of ball pressure that the Toros brought in the first half really set a tone for them. And here they go in, a wild shot hoisted up. Going up for that one, Hunter Seymour coming down with it. But They call a jump ball here. Alternating possession will give the Red Leafs the basketball. So Simon Fraser getting a stop on their First defensive series, and here's David Penny. We talked about him. Can he get his team going here? Oladelli to Beckett, guarded by Miller. Lefebvre comes to set the screen instead right now with a basketball. Right kicks it back up top, almost stolen, but Penny recovers, shot clock down to eight. Penny spins on the baseline, but dispossessed of the ball. Jamal right on the baseline. Jordan Hillstock. Took the worst of that. And you can see with SFU's offense, everybody outside the three-point line setting up for an ISO. And good cut by Jamal Wright to take it to the hoop and hopefully get two more points for SFU. A great eye on that, Jake, because Hillstock did get called for the foul right now at the free throw line. Oh. Tough sledding for SFU at the three-point line, or free throw line, pardon me. 
SFU was just one of three from the stripe in the first half. Cal State Dominguez Hills, eight of 14. So neither is th these teams uh, set to shoot that instructional video on free throw shooting in the first half. And we're having problems with the score clock right now. Yeah, SFU currently 25%. Not, not what you need. Now not it's a small sample size. Small sample size, Granted. but you need the frequency of trips as well. Just, I think, the health of any team is a, a much more robust free throw trip attempt number at halftime. But you also have to look at um, Dominguez Hills. When they had five straight free throws to end the second half. Yeah, you're right. Or the first half. Like, what a swing in... in play for SFU and they started really bad from the free throw line and then kind of recovered a bit so SFU's got to get to the stripe and, and make it count. Hey the basketball gremlins uh, broke into the West Gym last night and <laughs> have wreaked havoc with the electronics within the building currently the scoreboard says 138 to 27 it's now down to 39 to 27 that's where they want it <laughs> but it hasn't been cooperating uh, to a large extent tonight so a bit of a delay as the teams now break the huddle and get ready to resume action. Jamal Wright will step in. Wright's first trips of the game from the stripe. And he is going to make that one. So Jamal right now with eight points to lead all Red Leaf scorers. Simon Fraser, what can they respond defensively with here? Beckett standing in, and Eric Beckett does a great job. Forces the turnover. So Simon Fraser, two straight stops to start. We talked about ball pressure. Can Penny shake Miller? Oladele to George Lefebvre. He goes to the other side of the floor to Penny. Miller is constantly shadowing the point guard. Lefebvre oh. to the hole. Oh. And they're going to call a char uh, they're going to call an offensive foul there on Lefebvre, are they? Yep, they're going to call it on him. Bit of a bang bang play. Bang bang play and the Toros rose to cheer on their teammate. But not a bad idea. Simon Fraser's got to find ways to make things happen here. Lefebvre with the foul, his second of the game. Simon Fraser needs to find the spark here. Right, defending, can't stop a tough basket. And we said Cheatham was going to hurt you. He did right there. And they've held him relatively in check, but you can see he has those moments where he just, no matter what, is going to get to the hoop. There's Oladele. Back up top to Lefebvre, hesitation. Guarded by Seymour, into the paint, up fake, off the window, can't get it to go. Andre Ball with the rebound, quickly they come here to Cheatham. Cheatham, ooh, that's a defensive foul. That elbow right into the nose of Beckett, and he goes down hard. He might have landed into uh, George's knee, I think, so. That's not good. That's not ideal. Beckett just getting back from a sore hamstring that really hampered his play against UBC, but he is one tough customer. I feel like I feel like he could just throw in the pads and suit him up tomorrow <laughs> on Terry Fox Field. Deion Sanders, double duty. <laughs> Here's Penny. Oh boy, I'll tell you, that, that Miller is right in his grill. Oh, right. Jamal, the drive, the kick to Lefebvre. Spinning in the paint, the oh. dish underneath, coming to a cutting Beckett. And they can't make that one happen. It feels like they're just inches away on a couple of these passes. Got to be frustrating if you're SFU, where you know, the intention's there, but we just can't get that execution. Well, they're showing SFU a different level of Ball pressure right now are the Toros. Seymour 
against Lefebvre. Trying to find it, but it goes right across the rim and out. Whistle blowing here. I, I think it's a foul. That's a foul against uh, Andre Ball. No, against uh, Cheatham. His third. So Cheatham taking a seat here. Here's Jamal right now to Beckett. Oladelli comes up to meet that pass quickly to Penny. Working off the Lefebvre high screen into the paint. Ooh, everything, the tempo being forced, but what a great job by Penny to get that rebound right is blocked underneath and Miller on the break, quickly cross court and they knock down the triple. That's a shot to the heart. Cam Berry drains the triple. We, you know, we talked about having a good start and how important that is, and SFU's having a tough one right now. They certainly are. 44-28, that's... Coach Adil there telling the referees that was a flop, but Simon Fraser is going to get called, and is that Oladele extending the arm is going to get called? Look like a little bit of gamesmanship perhaps, but still, gotta be careful. And Oladele's third, so he'll come out of the game. Simon Fraser battling just to find the karma right now. As Zaborniak now into the game. Zaborniak, Beckett, Lefebvre, Wright, and Penny on the floor for Simon Fraser. Here's Cam Berry off the window, swirls and falls for the junior from San Diego's Miramar College. All Toros here in the early stages of this second quarter. A four minute flurry that's given them solid control of this basketball game. Right back up to Lefebvre. George, little move into the oh, paint, nice. gets to the glass. And that's the, the glimpse of what you're gonna get probably this year is just a guy who really drive strong and finish with his opposite hand. Down by 16, can they get a stop? They do here, a chance to build some momentum. Zaborniak kicks back out to Lefebvre. Penny now, back up top to right. Zaborniak's gonna hoist. Oh. Nine on the shot clock and doesn't go. Got a good look at it. Morris to Miller, back up top. Barry, he's been an assassin, can't get that one to fall. So much opportunity, but Simon Fraser has to start dictating the play at a, a much greater degree than they have here in the second half. Great crossover by Penny into the paint. They converge, Lefebvre, and George does a great job getting his defenders in the air. Yeah, and you can see his size is really, what kind of sets him apart and his ability to move the way he does at his size. Yeah, good job there. Something positive happening for the Red Leafs. And they need a lot of positive things to happen at this point, you know, down 16. Still plenty of time. Just under 15 minutes left, lots can happen. And so much at stake in these games too. Yes, you want to learn, yes, you want to get better, and yes, it's not the conference, Jake, but I mean, when it gets time to seeding and stuff like that, depending on how you do, these scores, I'm pretty sure are gonna come into play. It all matters, no, it's, it's very true. And you know, even though this is a non-conference game, this is a counter though, right? Like you said, so, you know, if I were to tell Steve Hansen, hey, don't worry if you lose, it's okay. Like, he's gonna punch <laughs> me in the face. Like, it, <laughs> you know, it matters to him, yes. it matters to everybody. And just from a pride standpoint, like the, the Buchanan Cup was like technically a scrimmage, but it doesn't matter because, you know, these guys just wanna play and they just wanna play at a high <laughs> level. And, you know, we've seen uh, earlier today, a really intense game. And, you know, today, maybe not as much vitriol in, the, in this game, but you're seeing, you know, still a, a lot of competitiveness and a lot of excitement from uh, the Toros here. As the teams come back out onto the floor for all our non-Canadian viewers tonight, we are talking about the Buchanan Cup. It's the 
recently restarted Crosstown rivalry. Think of like the University of Cincinnati against Xavier, that type of a deal. Simon Fraser playing the UBC Thunderbirds who play in what is called U Sports, the Canadian University system and the two teams Crosstown rivals and Simon Fraser won the game last year right here at a sold out West Gym and UBC was able to win it a couple of weeks ago at their Vancouver campus at War Memorial Gymnasium. But as Jake explains, the game did not count. It was under the NCAA regs, a scrimmage, basically. Lefebvre hits the first. Could be the first of you know, two points that get them back on track. Yeah, that's how rallies start. You gotta, there we go. Take everything possession by possession. Now the prime goal here, get a stop. 14 points at deficit here, 15 minutes remaining in this game. Morris back up top. Barry, jumper, Morris off the mark. Great job by Stone to box out and get that rebound. David Penny, the entry on the wing, Lefebvre. Guarded by Hillstock, has the advantage there. Oh. oh, and again, it goes against Simon Fraser. The offensive foul called as Hillstock hits the deck. Yeah, that that was, <laughs> I don't think he got his feet set on that. I, I well, George has got a big smile on his face as he comes up the floor. That's a tough break there. Third foul, Lefebvre's gonna sit. For the record, so did Hillstock as well. I think they both were like, you know, you understand what I'm doing, I yeah. understand what you're doing kind of thing. <laughs> Bill Stock will inbounds, he's gonna get it back here. Nigel Hilton now on the floor as well, wearing number 23 along with Zach Stone and Jamal Wright in the front court. Penny and Zaborniak in the back court. Hill Stock to Morris, now to Barry. Entry down low. Fighting underneath, can't get it to go. And that was Eric Watson. Shot clock at one, gets it off in time. Oh, they're gonna call a shot clock violation. Simon Fraser, basketball. That might be their best defensive series yet. Like, you know, a couple of tough, uh, you know, plays defensively from Hilton down low, forcing a shot clock violation. Like, that's what you need to have for the rest of this game. Yeah, and most importantly now, build on that. Have some. Have some confidence to make things happen offensively. Zaborniak right to the window, and he gets it to roll home. Jimmy. Jimmy basketball. <laughs> Jimmy Buckets. Jimmy Buckets, there you go. There you go. I was looking for a nickname. That works. <laughs> Little hesitation into the paint. Reverse doesn't go. Stone with a second good play underneath the basket. Here they come to Jamal Wright in transition. Right the kick. Zaborniak for three, and he knocks it down. Jimmy Buckets all over the gym. So he's Jimmy Buckets from now on. Is that what we're going with? I like it. Okay, that's what we'll go with. Okay, Jimmy Buckets <laughs> bringing this thing back. In. Again, the, the ability for a true freshman to come in in what is basically your home opener. Isn't that something? It's kind of wild, hey? It's kind of crazy. Like 46-37. Like this wow. time last year, where was he? He was at Burnaby South. He was at Burnaby <laughs> South, yes. That's crazy. Burnaby South leading the Rebels on their way to the Provincial Quad A Championship last March, and what a job he did with that team. But to make that happen at this level, as a pure freshman, you know, five months after his high school graduation is, is pretty amazing. And it's just something we don't see a lot of. Like, we, you know, we talked about this earlier. Just, you know, we've recruited a lot out of you know, Toronto, the States, but for even a local product, it's just not something that's happened a lot in the last, you know, give or take 10 years. So it's fun to see someone in the same city as Burnaby as well. Um, you know, the hometown kid kind of showing, crazy? showing up on a Friday night. Yeah, I know his, his coach, Mike Bell at Burnaby South, extremely proud in the play that Jimmy Zaborniak has shown here early but I can tell you coach Bell would not be surprised he would say you know what the kid the kid was so fearless throughout his entire high school career and he just wanted to get better every day and uh, very Nash like in that way you know just 
not letting anything stand in your way. What a job number one has done here for Simon Fraser in this rally. Kind of reminds me a little bit of uh, Josiah Mastandrea, who's coaching on a team. That's what he was last year, right? That, that spark energy guy off the bench, hit a three, three and D type of player. And that's what he's been today. He has been so huge. And none more than that three from the corner with his bench cheering him on. So they come out of a timeout uh, with a game plan and a purpose, we hope, if you're cheering from the Simon Fraser perspective. But this Toros team has been formidable. And here they come again with Barry. Cameron Barry, the San Diego native. Jeremy Dent Smith now to Barry right into the paint. Back up top. Barry again, that's his shot. It doesn't go, ripped away by Zaborniak and Jimmy Z zipping down the court. Oh. Underneath to Jamal Wright. What a feed, what a feed. Here they come. Oh man, you're seeing a little bit of energy from SFU. This is what, and almost the steal. <laughs> Gotta keep him in the game. Yeah, and the absolute uh, feeling in this building changing with the crowd just coming alive here for the Red Leafs. Joven Rye now wearing zero into the game. He's part of a guard trio with Penny and Zaborniak. Penny's going to come out. Old Oladele now, the freshman number five in. A guard skilled group with Stone in the middle. Interesting combination of players here for head coach Steve Hansen. Simon Fraser basketball. Everything's going the Red Leafs way. You know, there's that age old, is momentum a real thing? Is it quantifiable? <laughs> it kind of feels like. Reach out and just grab it, Jake. <laughs> but it, it feels like there's a little bit of that for the Red Leafs right now. No, I c couldn't agree with you more. That's a great way to put it. The elusive Mo is uh, somehow working for them. Here's Rye back up top to Stone. Zaborniak, work off the stone screen. They'll get right to the glass, rejected. Swatted out of bounds by Hunter Seymour. That's to remind him that he's a freshman, I think, you know, <laughs> like to humble. But, but, the, but the beauty of it is uh, Zaborniak will just put his head down and take yeah, it right out of the game. Shoot again. Timeout on the floor. We'll keep it right here with 11.57 remaining. Yeah, that double digit lead down to seven points. Wow, Simon Fraser. And Red Leaf basketball officially born today in the West Gym. So good to see. And I'll tell you, the, the, the new name is starting to roll off the tongue. Yeah, I mean, it is right behind us too. It is. Which is nice uh, yep. to see in a, you know, this red wall. Uh, previously really beige and gross. Yeah, it kind of lacks some character, you know, within the context of the gym. But now it all fits and looks great. We're and beginning to kind of feel out the name. It's such an early, you know, it's only been a couple months. Yes, but I think it's yes. a little more natural now for people to say, getting yeah. used to it. And that uh, that gym uh, wall was red very early in the naming process. As soon as it was unveiled, I walked in the gym and went, whoa, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> it's there. Oh, and of, of all the things, you know, in the media, and I spent... 40 years in the media, Jake. I've never seen any secret protected as well. Like, it's astounding oh. that it never got out. It was a, uh, a, you know, being a part of the, <laughs> the whole process. It was, you know, challenging in this day and age, right, to pick a name that yeah, works yeah. for everybody. But I think, you know, mission accomplished. There. Mission accomplished, yeah. yes. And we're getting back to live action now. Simon Fraser wanting to keep the momentum going. Can they do it here as uh, Joven Rye set to inbound the basketball? The Markham, Ontario native. The skip to, to Hilton. Five on the shot clock, and it's going to turn over. Simon Fraser loses possession as Beckett scrambles to the table to check in. Zach Stone comes out. Zach Stone gave him some nice stuff. You know, it's interesting just looking at Nigel Hilton, plus seven. And, you know, for a team that's been down for 20 oh, minutes Oh, you're, you're of the right game, about that, yeah. Like, that, that to me shows that he's doing something right. 
Let's see what he does here as he... Oh, tough shot. Fading's not going to go into the hands of Beckett, who's checked into the game. Jimmy Zaborniak puts his head down. Spinning, moving, turning, oh. tough arcing shot. Oh. Jimmy Buckets! <laughs> Jimmy Buckets all over the place. Oh, man. If you told me that that's how that play would have ended, I would not have believed you. What a play from Jimmy Buckets. What a shot. The degree of difficulty and the arc on that shot by Saborniak was unreal. Five-point deficit for Simon Fraser. Going to call Nigel Hilton for wrapping ball there. Oh, wow. SFU right back in this thing. He's got defenders on their heels, and when you looked at the ball pressure Toros are bringing in the first half, Zaborniak is melting that away by himself. Wow, Simon Fraser standing in. Head coach Steve Becker of the Toros not liking the call, but... They can feel it. They're pointing to the student section here with our got a couple of our sports teams here watching. And Isn't that something? Here's Zaborniak. Odalele. Joven Rye. Beckett wants to work off the screen. He will power his way down to the corner. No look. Kick to Odalele for three off the back iron. Look at Hilton. He extends so well. Five-point lead, Toros with the basketball and the lead. Here's Ball, can't find room against that double team, kicks to the baseline, back up top, 4-3 off the iron. And Odalele with a rebound. Team defense from SFU is on a very high level right now. Lots of effort, getting rebounds. And getting the ball to the right people, Hilton in the paint. And Hilton's been great defensively all night, but now we're going to see a little bit of that offensive side that they're what so excited about. What a comeback. Oh. Joven Rye challenging. I think it's going to get called for the foul. Joven Rye getting called for the block inside. Half break there is George Lefebvre and uh, David Penny will now check into the basketball game for Simon Fraser. Yes, yeah, so if you bring it in the big guns, but do you take out Jimmy Zaborniak? Like, who do you take out? Nigel Hilton's playing pretty well. I'm curious to see what, we'll see what they do does. here. It's going to be Hilton and Jimmy Z coming out of the game. There and Jimmy go. Z, uh, <laughs> yes, thank you. <laughs> Something tells me it's not the last we see of him tonight. I don't know. I, I think you're right. Just a hunch. but And a make there for a four-point lead. Simon Fraser right now with all the momentum. I think they've come back from, was it 14? Was that the largest deficit here? Huge uh, comeback. Yeah, let me see. 14. Well, Penny lost the ball. And Miller now on the break. The alley-oop to ball, and he slams it home. Wow. Okay. <laughs> If you wanted some momentum back in your way. <laughs> good way to get it. Yeah, that's a pretty good way to get it. Oh, my goodness. Here's Beckett now. Simon Fraser has been solid. Can they have short memories and get their get those two points right back? Here's Lefebvre, baseline. Jimmy knocks it down. George Lefebvre with a clutch shot on the baseline. George has some touch, too. He's not just a big bruiser. He's a great athlete, but he also has a decent shot, uh, yeah. jumper. You're right. Feathers on that one for sure. Here we go in the half court again. Cheatham looking for that one on one doesn't get it to go Joven to Penny off the window Penny is, cru is crushed underneath the basket and there's no call oh, wow. it's prison rules out here <laughs> <laughs> oh and Ball takes a hard fall as does Lefebvre underneath the basket. No blood, no foul. Rye tees it up. Oh, misses the three ball. And look at Odolele keeping that one alive. 8.08 remaining. 
And this is what everybody came to see. Simon Fraser. Penny in a crowd, uh. can't get it to go. They collapse on him underneath. It was Seymour underneath. It's still that's a few possession. They got four seconds though, so whatever you draw, better be good. Four seconds, you're right. Well, on the shot clock, coming out with 7.58 remaining. Back in the day, I remember uh, they had a play where, I think it was the Julian Roche, but it was like a certain call, like whatever number it was, and it was an alley-oop right off the, the, the inbound. And I'm wondering if, you know, four seconds left, you don't really have a lot of time. Maybe they'll dig that baby out again. Yeah, dig it out. Give it to uh, you know, Big George, come on. So Jimmy Zaborniak, and who else checked in? I think it was, uh, wasn't paying attention. But some changes, two, two new SFU players checking in after this timeout. 7.58 remaining. What a comeback it's been for the home team, the Red Leafs. Oh. And regardless of what happens here tonight, Jake, I mean, Simon Fraser, I think, uh, it's a, it's a shot of confidence to the to the belief system that they're doing the right things to become the team they need to be early in the season. And I think it's also like encouraging because you have a lot of people here. They're going to want to come back. Yeah. You're going to want to see this because you know if it was just a really boring game or there wasn't you know action at both ends, you know maybe you're discouraged. But like this shows you like yeah this is going to be a fun team to watch. So here they come. What have they drawn up in? That timeout that can get them something here in four seconds. Zaborniak quickly to Lefebvre. Two, one on the shot clock. He puts it up and he gets it to go. That's good for Lefebvre. What a job by Simon Fraser. He's so good with his left hand, I've noticed. Like, he's always able to finish with his opposite hand. Seemed to just uh, dance through the raindrops underneath the basket and get to the rim. Here's Barry. Lefebvre out guarding him on the perimeter. They go to Miller. Zaborniak, ball. Oh, was it gonna be against Jamal Wright? Is that? It was against Jamal Wright. So Wright get called for the foul there. Simon Fraser digging in, but Toro's basketball with 20 on the shot clock. Barry now. Ooh, great tip there. Oh, but right back to him, and he lays it up and in. Well done for Isaiah Morris. David Penny had some fingertips on the basketball. Penny here now wants to get those back. Here's Zaborniak. Jimmy, 15, oh, okay. swish, baby. Jimmy Buckets. Great off-ball screen from uh, Zach Stone, but also, again, nails for Jimmy. Courage to step up and make shots. Zaborniak. Kick back out, here's Ball. Back to Barry, that's his shot, bingo, three ball. Barry's been lights out Ooh, today. Ooh, got to chase that guy off the three-point line. He is deadly. Cameron well, Barry. Okay, Jamal right now. Six-point lead for the Toros. They're on defense. Jamal in and out. Look at Zaborniak. There's no quit. He gets the steal. Penny now. Zaborniak to right, back up top to Lefebvre. Jimmy's gonna use that screen on the wing. He's gonna cut underneath the basket, kick it for three. And Penny just George. off the mark, Lefebvre. Oh. <laughs> Unbelievable. George Lefebvre with a finish <laughs> underneath. The basketball karma is there. Ooh. Wow. Jimmy Zaborniak has lit a fire throughout the entire lineup. Oh, and there's a steal from Penny. 
David Petty on the break to Jamal Wright underneath, gets his defender in the air, lays it up and in. Jamal Wright makes it 55 to 53. It's a two point deficit. That is a 12 point comeback for Simon Fraser with 5.07 remaining in this game. Looks like there's a injury to ball. Trainers out on the floor. Could be a cramp. It looks like a cramp, honestly. Sorry, Jake. I didn't see the player. It was a uh, ball. Oh, it's ball. Okay. So let's hope he's okay. As you mentioned, potentially cramping up. The trainer tending to him right now. Simon Fraser, though, has stolen the thunder from the Toros. Well, I was going to say, this, <laughs> the, the start of the, the half, I was, I was about to say, this is not going to be the best game to watch you know it was like a, a well we also said you also said as well you know they needed that good start they didn't get it right they were no. down by 14 they looked cooked and finished at that point but something happened and as i said regardless of what happens this is the simon fraser team i think that uh, coach hansen and his staff knew they were putting together uh, no. over the over the off season what a group what an effort and again like we mentioned a real you have to think as well, like a lot of these guys are from so many different places. They haven't played together. You're right, yeah. So this is game two for them. And you're seeing this kind of cohesion start to build, which uh, is a very good thing. It means that, you know, they could potentially make some noise down the stretch if they continue this gelling process. And here they are, the starting five on the group. You look at the contact. They're all making, all looking at each other in the eye and encouraging each other. It's Zaborniak, Penny. Beckett, Lefebvre, and Wright. And here they come, the oh. crowd cheering them as, oh, they're cheering Ball, who's limping off, favoring that left leg. What a what a player he has been here. They're gonna help him off the court. It's it's bothering him to that oh. point now. Yeah, you hope it's... Let's just hope he's yeah. okay. What a performance he put on tonight. And if people came to watch him specifically play, you saw like, what, three massive dunks or something? Like he yeah, definitely yeah. showed out today. Oh my gosh. Here's Morris underneath the basket. 5.07 remaining, lots of time in anybody's basketball game now that Simon Fraser has come back from the brink and sit trailing by two. Cheatham against Beckett. What's left in the quiver of moves? Oh, the call and the foul on Beckett. Well, that's a killer, honestly, because it really felt like you, you had moved everything all the way towards SFU's end, and three-point play's not good. Boy, <laughs> free throws. something's in the air, I'm telling you. You see the team miss that many free throws. Zaborniak. Here's Lefebvre, far side of the court, that is Penny trying to get free, he goes cross court. Beckett will put up a three off the mark there, ooh. Looked like David got possession with a foot out of bounds. Two possession game here. 4.24 remaining. to Borniak, guarding Miller, back up top they come to Barry. Cheatham, this time doesn't go for him. And here's Zaborniak, he wants to hit the gas. Oh, tries a wraparound, oh, how did Lefebvre save that? And just tried to play a bad angle under the basket. Super long arms that he has, Boy. but <laughs> wow. Some flexibility in that torso, too, to make that happen. Here's Cheatham. Beckett's guarding him. They go to Barry into the paint, the dish to the baseline corner. Back up top, Barry for three in his wheelhouse off the mark there. Right, a big rebound. Right in front of Cheatham. Penny, the outlet. Zaborniak underneath the basket. 
And George Lefebvre hits a tough shot with a defender right in his face. Damarian Lowe right in his face and Lefebvre hits it. Ooh. Makes it a two point game. Simon Fraser trailing by a bucket with 309 left. Just love the versatility of Lefebvre able to shoot from distance, able to get into the paint. He's shown a lot of the excitement <laughs> that you we are have bang for on him. with that. Swiss Army knife today for Lefebvre, number 34, doing it all. Barry, little hesitation, dribble into the paint off the window, rolls off the iron. Look at the smallest guy on the floor getting the rebound down to right. Oh, and he is raked underneath the basket. Ooh. The rebound by Jimmy Z in the outlet to Jamal Wright. Jamal Wright walks 50 feet just to shake Jimmy Zaborniak's hand. Thank you for that pass. So immediate timeout call, but they're gonna come back with some free throws for Lefebvre. How about Jimmy Z coming up with that ball? <laughs> He's the shortest guy on the floor. I was gonna say, if you like again, of all the people to get the ball, get the rebound. <laughs> pretty, pretty spectacular for the freshman guard, but also the wherewithal to throw it up to yeah. Jamal Wright. And, man, so, it, it, Zaborniak's almost at center court, and, and he gets up and comes all the way yeah. over to shake his head like he wants to say thank you. Huh. What, what a difference maker the freshman has made. Oh. And for SFU, like, could you ask for a better last 10 minutes or so? Like, this is... Oh, it's been breathtaking. Uh, yeah, I agree with you, Jake. Firing on all cylinders. Oh, my gosh. They grab us some numbers there as they come out of the machine. I'm not sure if the cartridge is working, but we'd love to see some numbers. How are we looking here? Let's look at uh, the man of the hour and see how he's doing. Zaborniak with 12. Jamal Wright with 12 and Lefebvre with 15. So three double-digit scorers now for Simon Fraser, who have really gotten it together. And I think with George, like, those three-point attempts, I don't think that was those were, like, the ideal plays for him. If you erase those, like, He's we're talking about a super efficient night. like <laughs> Six of eight from the field. Now, it's easier said than done to erase it, but, I mean, it's yeah. just... He's been so good in the second half. Like, you can tell that of all the players I talked to Steve Hansen about, he was the most excited about George. Well, he's certainly shown it. And we were talking about a 14. It was actually an 18-point oh lead. So that they've cut 16 points off that lead. They can make it uh, even closer here. See if they can tie this up, which seemed improbable at one point, like you mentioned, Howie. Oh, misses the second. They trailed by 18 points, 318 into the second half. So they've taken 16 points off in 16 minutes. Uh, not an easy task. Here's Cheatham into a crowd. The dish to Barry. Step back triple from the baseline. Corner knocks oh. it down. And he is such a good shooter. Wow. And did you see him create that space too, Barry? <laughs> Oh, man. And he's clapping hard on the defensive end is number 20. What a difference maker that shot was. 2.09 left. Barry the dagger. Zaborniak angles to Lefebvre inside. And George is a magnet inside and, and working so well with Zaborniak. It's not a bad strategy. Either he's getting to the stripe or he's getting you know, two points. <laughs> Simon Fraser has barely been to the free throw. They had three free throw trips at the half, Jake. We said that they were one of three. Right now they are five of eight. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I can say. I'm just yeah. like. It's amazing. It's been such a nice, uh, you know, I was a little nervous after that slow start to the second half, but they just turned it on so well. Down by a deuce again. Just can't crack that uh, barrier. This is the closest they've been. 152 remaining. So many weapons on this Toros team. Here's Miller underneath the basket. He goes, cheat him off balance. Can't get it to go into the hands of Jimmy Z. Great defense from Eric Beckett. Hands up. No body contact. Perfect. 
Everybody pitching in here is Zaborniak. Showing the handles and the composure as he comes across half court. 1.30 remaining. Jimmy Z into the paint off the window. He lays it up and in. <laughs> Jimmy Buckets, where have you been? 60 to 60, coming back to tie from 18 down. There's no chance he's getting taken out of this game. I can tell you that right <laughs> now. <laughs> Jimmy Zaborniak, look at these fans cheering for Jimmy Z, the freshman. What a game by Zaborniak. That has been something else to watch. And if you're SFU now, who do you want to have the ball? Like it's probably George or it's Jimmy. So Z Zaborniak has scored 11 points on, uh, that'd be four of six, five of seven. He's, been f he's five of seven himself yes. in the second half. But dishing as well, getting steals, doing so many things, just orchestrating. I I'm, I'm just absolutely blown away. I mean, I watched this kid in March in front of a, crowd of like I don't know how many thousand that was at the LEC yeah. in the hockey arena at the LEC the largest crowd they've ever had in there Burnaby South and he's leading the way on his way to tournament MVP but then to step up to this level against guys that are four or five years older than him it also seems like there's a large contingent of the Burnaby South crowd yeah. here right now watching uh, you know the kid the Burnaby kid wow loving what he's doing yeah. Zaborniak now out there with Penny Lefebvre, Beckett, and Jamal Wright. Hey. 72 seconds remaining in a tie game. Miller now to Barry. Barry right to the window, so dangerous. Miller chases down that loose ball. We're down to one minute remaining. Cheatham back up top to Barry. Penny in a stance. Shot clock down to 10, underneath. Oh, that's a travel that didn't get called. Barry with the basket, swings it. Miller, a jump shot. He knocks it down, a rare jumper there from Miller. And a big shot there, but I can't believe. It looked like a travel Came to me Came down well. with the ball and then jumped himself after. That is a, sure looked like it from here, but. 44.5 seconds left now, a two-point lead. That was Miller's first shot from the field, I believe, in this game. Sixty-two to sixty, what a game. Beckett will inbound. Two point guards on the floor, Penny's gonna take it. And they're probably gonna want a quick. Here they come, Penny signals as he gets across half court. Timeout, Simon Fraser. I would imagine they wouldn't want uh, the Toros to have the last shot here, so is that gonna be a quick, quick, quick chance and then you know, take your chances again? I don't know, we'll see. We'll see what they do. We'll drop something quickly here. That group on the floor has been so effective for them. We talked about Lefebvre, but Jamal Wright as well has been big tonight. It's been interesting to see their rotation without uh, Victor Radikash as well, because you know he'll be a part of the rotation heavily. Oh, he'll be a huge part of it. You're right about that. Yeah, and they've had to, I mean, hey, they had to go on without him. He wasn't able to play today, so showing what they have, and they'll be even stronger once... Uh, Victor returns to the lineup. That could be tomorrow, we don't know. Penny's gonna inbound right in front of our broadcast location. 40.3 seconds, do they go two for one here? Zaborniak, solid handles out to Penny. And the shot clock is running down to 15 to 14. Can't find the shot they want. Lefebvre can't squeeze it, and it's gonna go out of bounds. Uh -huh. 
62 to 60. The got two a, point lead here. Got to imagine you see a quick foul here. Bad luck. Right play design just didn't quite get there. Very quickly, Penny answers with that foul. He fouls Miller. Hey, with free throws today, nothing's for granted, right? <laughs> nothing, like, is, nothing is guaranteed. Like, I wouldn't be shocked if he went one for one here. 10 of 17 from the stripe today. Well under what they want to be shooting as a team as Miller steps in. He did hit the big shot on his first field goal attempt of this game, number four. He's been a lockdown defender tonight. Now they're going to ask him to give them some offense as number four steps up from 15. He makes the first... Makes the front end there, and it's going to be a 63-60 huge shot here. No hesitation, a four-point lead and a two-possession advantage here. Zaborniak's going to call a quick timeout here. 21 seconds left, Simon Fraser will take one. Interesting. So they have a 30 and a, and a full, full remaining. So I'm guessing, again, if you're SFU, you're taking a quick shot, foul, hope for the best. Got to think it goes into number one, or goes to number one, I should say. He's been your best shooter all day. The one thing all you can say about the Toros, though, their ball pressure and the way they oh, defend yeah. is tenacious. And it'll serve you well in a situation like this. 21.4 seconds left as head coach Steve Hansen gets, uh, gets, the, gets the grease board out. There is a scheme. Did you get a peek at the board? I didn't. Can you preview what's going to happen? I didn't, <laughs> and he's already wiped it clean. <laughs> I saw a little bit. I Did don't you? know. <laughs> We'll see what happens. There we go. I'm Penny excited. again to inbound, yeah. Let's go. 21.4. It's inbounded quickly to right. Jamal guarded. As if he's got to hurry up Down here. 14 seconds. They need a bucket quickly. Here's Penny trying to break down his defender. Oh, oh can't get it ten. to go. And it is a... Toro's ball and they will foul quickly and tough break there. But again, I thought well, there was a goaltend there. It looked like there was possible on the side the of the goal. Perhaps we saw a ball being swatted down. Yeah. But either way, it's going to be Cheatham at the free throw line. And also, great performance from the Toros today as well. Like it, They have been Cheatham, though, 0 for 3 from the stripe today. See if he can't uh, break that, and he does right there. Hey, hey, four up, four up, drive, drive. So the Toros get pushed, but they are doing their best to put some finishing touches on here. They can make it a two-possession, a full two-possession lead here. Leading by six with 6.1. Simon Fraser came back from 18 down to tie it. But unable to get ah. things to happen here. That's a tough break. 3.4 seconds left. I heard Steve Becker, the Toros coach, no fouls, no threes. Yeah, no fouls, no threes. I mean, 3.4 seconds, it's... In, in When you're watching like an NBA broadcast, it feels like an eternity with commercials and everything. <laughs> exactly. In reality, it's going to be pretty pretty tough here for SFU, but you know, regardless of the outcome, they really showed up wow. in that second half. And I think you're seeing the makings of a pretty good team. Yeah. Truly. You know, I, I know the game can have ramifications beyond just a loss later in the season, but if it will reveal to you something so significant that it could be a major you know, part of your team, like absolutely over the next four years... I'm not going to cry about it. I am not going to cry about it if it's an L. Because they saw that kid seize this game. Yeah. And, come, and that is worth more than almost anything at this point. When you're starting with those guys, it was amazing. to see. I've never seen a freshman at this school do that. In the, and I've been calling games here since 03. I can't remember it, honest to God. 
No, that, it's, it's usually, the, you know, kind of gloves on approach with freshmen. <laughs> and then with him, they're like, okay, have at it. Yeah. Like, well, we've been, wait, line. we've been waiting for BC freshmen. 3.4 to go here. What can they do? Zaborniak wants to put up the quick shot. He puts oh. a three up and he nails it. It doesn't matter. The kids still hit the shot. What a day for Jimmy. What Zaborniak. a day for wow. Jimmy Z. Good for him. Jimmy buckets in a three point loss. It's tough to take the L, but wow, I think there's something bright happening here. And it's not even, you know, obviously Jimmy showed up, but also. George Lefebvre, like, you know, we're talking about a guy, there's a lot of hype around oh, him. Oh, yeah. But for a reason, I've seen him, you know, in and around the facility, in practice, dunking the ball. He He's a different type of player. Like, I think he's a different type of player than they've had for a while, so, overall. It was amazing. Here's Coach Hansen as he comes by. Coach Adil. Yeah, a lot, a lot of positives to look at, I think, for SFU, and I think long term we're going to see yeah you know some some really exciting basketball and it starts on december 3rd it starts on december the 3rd jake and you know before we sign off here i mean obviously we we saw you know how you're never out of a basketball game i mean a as much as we thought it was just not going to be their night the entertainment value of that comeback from 18 oh, yeah. down to actually tie it was amazing and i think it's gonna it'll have a ripple i think for the remainder of this season no question and, I, and I think you, you, as a team, though, you kind of prove it to yourself a little bit. You know, if you kind of shy away and have a, you know, really lackluster second half, you start to question, like, are we really good? You know, is this a, a year for us? Like, I don't know. But when you come out hard, you, you feel that confidence boost. You're like, we can play with anybody. This is a really good team that you're playing against. Let's be clear, right? This might be the best team they play all year. So you're talking about starting your year with two really tough opponents, and hanging in there and playing really well, yeah, I'm excited for the season. Jake, thanks for being with us. Thanks for everybody in our production crew here. Hope you enjoyed the broadcast. Wherever you watch from, please be here tomorrow starting at 5.15, the first of two games. Simon Fraser will play at 7.30, and that'll be it for the GNAC CCAA Challenge. Howard Samara for Jake and everybody on the crew. Have a great night, and see you all back here tomorrow.